Hello everyone, it is I, Ravenwood, and welcome back to the creepy commentary notes of Volume 7, and we're starting off with Chapter 7, featuring Connor Kersey, uh, Kersai, or is it Kersey? Uh, I've been saying it both ways, but anyways, Miles, Eddie, and Carrie. <clears throat> Fiona's Simmons was originally going to be Torchic Simmons, and it was call called the Deep Pockets. <laughs> But they never found a moment for him to use it, so they decided he could be a great example of how some people don't unlock the Simpsons. Or you could still keep it canon and have it a comic or in the manga. I'm just saying. If, if he had a similar this entire time and it was deep pockets, then he could probably have um, done it then and there. But I, I do have to say... Uh... I, I do have to say that, um, yeah, I, I guess uh, it's probably one of the problems with volume one, two, and three is that Roman torture was just not um, taken seriously. This could have been a useful semblance, especially during battle. Um, like, maybe he could probably shove someone into his one of his pockets. That doesn't sound right, but the the port the, the portal of the, the void. I honestly don't know how deep pockets would work scientifically, or like they say in the show that semblances are not is not magic. So my question is, how is it possible? How? How is this even possible? If this is not, if this is not magic, then why is it called the sim? Why is semblance and magic different? Why why couldn't the semblance be, be a, be technically. Magic, I'm I'm so confused at this point. I I feel like even this far we'll still not figure out the difference between magic and semblance. Uh, anyways, uh, this, so they decided it would be a great example of how some people don't unlock the semblances. But you haven't... Um, okay. <laughs> Why not? Originally, some of uh, uh, Chapter 7 was meant for Chapter 4 because he made certain decisions in Chapter 4 and Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 and Chapter 1 that <laughs> obviously had to, needed to be there, even though I can argue it wasn't necessary. Uh, honestly, some of these episodes, you could just chunk out the window and not have them at all. And just replace them with uh, actual episodes. Uh, actual episodes that you actually need. Like learning, actually learning about the the Happy Huntresses. And actually learning about uh, uh, Team uh, uh, Flint Cole. Not Flint Cole. Uh, uh, what was it? Team, Team Funky. Team Funky. And learning about t and learning about the the Aesops, that that was something that was supposed to be a, pr a priority. If you're gonna have them fight the characters, then at least let them fight those characters. It w eventually co come to that point. If in the and if you're gonna have them beat them, then at least show us. Uh, the, their weaknesses and, and all that. You didn't do that. But I could go on a rant about that fight. But we're not there yet. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we're not even we're not even close to there. Um, and and, and <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> essentially. Um. Uh, 
Anyways, originally seven was C if C seven was meant for C four, ha huh? C four, uh, where they found out earlier that Tina was involved with things. Okay, whatever, whatever, fine. Uh, Miles wrote the description we got on Tune's past. Sam was first counting Tyrion and was one of his favorite things to write. Oh yeah, sure. You wrote freaking paragraphs, even even redacted sentences that no one can see. That literally no one can read read this shit. No one can take a pop. Not even I. I even tried to when I watched it. I even tried to pause it and read this. This what is this? Three, four, five, probably six somewhere. Seven, six to seven different paragraphs. Six to seven different paragraphs, all on the screen. Which, by the way, you don't even did you, you didn't. Which, which is upsetting. You didn't even dedicate an entire episode to Tyrion about his uh, backstory. No, no. I mean, I get it. He's he's not that important of a character since he's essentially just you know cuckoo. But you, you, if you're gonna at least dedicate a character to have like paragraphs of the paragraph, the paragraph, paragraph for his backstory. Or, or at least things he's done in the past. Make it to where people can freaking read it. Or at least, at least have a uh, have a sequence where the people are are talking about the crimes he committed. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I I'm ho I I have to rewatch it. I honestly have to, uh, and I will do a re uh, volume. I will do an entire Ruby series rewatch and I'll jot notes. But for right now, it's just from memory, just from memory alone, I don't think they covered anything of Tyrion other than these paragraphs that you can't read. I'm trying to read right now. So what I did, I went onto the internet and found this. Someone had the had had the balls and and or well, not the balls someone i i don't know if it was the actual creator i don't know if it was someone from the creators of the show or if it was someone who was on reddit one day was like you know people can't read this shit and they noticed that the people can't read this shit so they made this beautiful beautiful edit now I'm hoping it was one, someone for the show. Then I'll give them a, a pat on the back. Okay, fine. You did this. You probably posted it on Twitter so everyone can read it, and like, or you posted it on an official website or something, uh, or or. Uh, but if it's like someone from 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 the fans, then okay, I give the fans more credit that they care more about this show than you, <laughs> Kruby. <laughs> no offense, but like it, it's it's kind of like that nowadays. I feel like there's more heart for the fans than the actual creators. Like, they just kind of sort of, okay, we just got to get this pet project done. And a lot of people could say, oh, it's it's Otter Meter Media's fault, or it's it's Warner Media's fault, or it's AT&T's fault. I don't care whose fault it is, is but, like, seriously, this is kind of sad. It kind of makes me, like, if I was a creator, if I was, like, a co-creator or someone who's just working on this project and if in in if I myself can't fall in love with the char characters I, I would probably ask to 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 leave or or transfer my work to 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 uh transfer my my job to some other department in Rooster Teeth cuz this is just, just disappointing and I don't want to be disappointed you know, I want to love this. I really do want to love this. And I'm not going to read this. No. No, 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 no. What I'll do is... Is I'll save this... <laughs> for for when we cover the character... In the Ruby Guidebook review. Okay? This will be something special. A Tyrion Callus will get a longer episode. Probably. 
but he'll get like this this as an add-on to the, the Ruby guidebook or uh, Ruby guidebook or the official unofficial can companion guide or whatever you want to call it um um because because you know he does not get he does not get enough attention as any other character in in the show right and already I'm reading this um like I'm I'm mentally reading this I'm not I, I'm physically but not uh, but I'm not gonna like read this to you I'm like I'm already reading this um visually not audibly and and it this is just long it's it is a long it, long uh, a lot of information to take in and I, I would like to do a separate episode just for cat uh, Tyrion Callows. uh when it come, when it, when we when we get to his character in the in the companion book if he is in the companion book i'll i'll make i'll keep this I'll I'll add this to the to that uh to his segment, okay? Because you literally just put all of this paragraph by paragraph, all in one one shot, mind you. Boom. Uh, here's Tyrion Callows. Here's all the information that you need for Tyrion Callows. We're not gonna dedicate a side episode or a mini episode or uh. Five second uh, backstory thing. No, no, we we're doing this lazy thing because we can. There's this is not love to a character. Okay, don't get me wrong. I don't mind this, but I would prefer to like also get more, a, a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Cause imagine, imagine. I'm I'm just trying to imagine, like someone just standing in front of the screen, trying like they could perfectly quick draw paused, and they quickly paused it like the fastest pause in the wild west, and and, and they and they reading it so that it doesn't have any motion blur blur or anything like. That. Uh, they're reading it, they're trying to read it, and they're just standing there, uh, and it, depending on so, how slow you're a reader, or, or if you're a fast reader, then you'd, you'd be like, okay, this would only take, like, what, five minutes, a minute or two? But, like, if you're a slow reader, it's probably take you, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go with, like, 30 minutes tops. Um, but, but, like, seriously, this is ridiculous. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not a Tyrion fan, but I am a Ruby fan. And and Tyrion, he's like one of the top tier villains, right? He's like the High Council. He literally sits on the Council seat. How do we not get an actual backstory for this? But we get more of a backstory for Watts than we do for Tyrion. And heck, we get more. Well, okay. On, uh, okay. Honestly, we get more backstory for Cinder. Cause she's the, like the, she's like the, uh, <clears throat> she's like the antagonist to Ruby while Salem's an antagonist to everyone. <laughs> but my point is like, how, how do we not get one of the, the like top tier bad guy? Oh, well, Gretel, Hansel, Han, Han, uh, not Hansel, uh, Hazel, sorry, Hans for a second there. What the fuck? Uh, no. Hazel gets more of a backstory than Watts, and Watts gets more of a backstory than Tyrion. And and maybe when I read this, it's pro probably those three uh, backstories are probably more entertaining than than uh, uh, Cinder. But like, come on! I know I'm going on a rant here, but come on! This is one of the most intriguing characters on the show the person who can literally trip up crow like crow's like one of the important characters as well because he's literally the uncle to two of the main characters and, and like and he's and he 
And he also killed Clover, who's like the, uh, the, the mirror to that of Crow. This guy's this guy's good, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't do this. I I sh I, I I know I shouldn't go on a rant like this, but like seriously, I feel bad for my Tyrion fans. Anyways, let's move on. Crow looking at Clover when he was willing to go with Ironwood's plan was meant to show some distance between growing uh distance growing between the two. Okay. I guess. We were going to get more of Ren explain why he was feeling the way and and uh, feeling the way he was and agreeing with Ironwood, but ultimately they were pushing to next volume. Yeah, you you kind of you, you kind of put again you kind of put a lot of things that you want uh, for, for, versus what you need. You you put all the wants first versus the need oh here's something that the fans would definitely like versus the actual drama for the show which would give the fans something that they need you know something that they're like oh yeah this is flavor okay i you're just giving us the cake but no icing and what's the point of eating cake if it's just the bread I mean, yeah, sure, it's sugary, but, like, it, usually you would put icing on the cake, right? Because it, cause it adds flavor. Or, 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 or I could be saying that you're giving us the icing, but without the bread. Without, without the actual cake. Ah, oh, yeah, sure, the icing tastes good. <laughs> but what about the actual cake? I feel like that's the problem with Ruby. Oh yeah, sh sure, sure. Sprinkles. Maybe add some sprinkles here and there. But like, what about the actual cake? Anyways. The next one. Originally, Blake and Yang were going to directly reference Adam when they had their talk. But later figured out how to reference him indirectly. I don't mind the indirect. But like, he literally... Well, I don't know if it's appropriate to do to directly indicate someone that you murdered or killed, depending on how you look at it. Um, uh, I don't know. I haven't killed anyone. I haven't murdered anyone either. So, oh no, I knew this person. Uh, he was bad guy. We could have saved them. We could have. Uh, knocked him out. We could have done several things, but we decided to to just simply kill him. Uh, we should. I mean, I I think the logical thing is to to not mention him directly. Um. But for volume eight, though, when you start mentioning him, uh, or mentioning about him, in in later volumes, I think it would be all right. To mentioning his name, uh, I feel like it's a bit. Uh, I'm saying this is probably a positive. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's. I I personally think it's all right to, to just mention someone's name. But then again, it's we have to keep in mind that Blake at one point liked, really liked this person. He, you know, she really loved him. He just changed for the worse. Uh, and that's just bad. Anyways, but like, like I could probably go on with that, but like, I don't know. There's nothing to talk about at this point. Uh, uh, like, I think they made the right decision here. I think someone's going to be like, oh, I don't, I think they should just mention him by name. But like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I honestly disagree. Um, but I, I honestly I, uh, agree with uh, this choice here. But like, I, I don't know, like. To completely drop the white fang, uh, white fang, uh, like yeah, sure, the white fang was ruined, it was destroyed the, the 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 plot, the plot, not just the the white fang itself, but like the the plot about the white fang and and the fondest discrimination was practically dropped uh, with volume five and, and volume six, but you, you, 
but just because you did something bad, okay, I, 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 I to disagree with with the with the with my uh, fellow c- critics. I don't think you should. They should have dropped the whole Faunus plot. Okay, uh, the discrimination, the Faunus, and whatnot, the plot. I actually don't. Uh, I actually. Th- I actually believe that they should probably continue it having it there. But no, they, they listened and then they then they killed Adam and then all that other stuff happened. But like you know, we could talk about like that for ages now, but you know, I personally think we should just drop it. <laughs> but anyways, the robot are uh, robot um the arm robot uh, Pietro has in his office was originally gonna have more of a character like the robot arm Tony Stark guy as yeah I kind of that right there I think was a wise decision I think that was a great decision don't make that decision and the reason why I think that is because you don't want to have the audience like oh no this is unoriginal you have it's it's essentially the same. well I mean it could be an easter egg like, oh yeah, that's cute. It's like the Tony Stark robot arm. But then there, there will also be fans who be like, oh, come on. This is not an original. So, I don't know. I don't think you should have a robot arm that does funny things. You'll be wasting screen time. You know, you have to think about the screen time. You don't want to waste screen time with stupid Easter eggs like this. Does that make sense? Is it's a wonder? It's a wonder that you don't have screen time for all this other stuff that you want to have. And it, but in, but instead you have a screen time for all the all this other stupid stuff that you do allow. So I'm like, can, you, you you're kind of you're kind of like, you have a bunch of straws and you pick the right ones and you also pick the wrong ones as well. And that happens with any writer, honestly. But like. Come on. <laughs> the volume 7 wasn't bad. It was just not good. Does that make sense? It was just watchable. Anyways, they tried to get Maria. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, see. Back to the robot arm. See, I'm glad that they didn't use it. But like... And, but like they sacrifice all they see they sacrifice some stuff that they don't need like the robot arm uh, having a personality like Tony Stark. They also sacrifice stuff that they also want like to get Maria have more scenes because right now fans just don't care about Maria. They just don't. They. You should honestly prioritize the whole civilized conversation. How to use it, how to properly use it. You know, that should be a constant lesson. Constant lesson. You know? Come on! There's no room for it because you choose all other scenes that you think that you need. So, like, I'm just confused here. Anyways, realize, Miles realizes... He was dumb to suggest that Pierre, Pierre, uh, Pietro cover Watts' face with his thumb while looking at a picture since they already did that with Raven Volume 3. You know, I'm going to say this this quote. If you haven't learned something that you that you said, yourself, you, that you learned the first time a- after you uh, are like, okay, you screwed up, I won't do it again, and then you do it again, then it's probably you haven't learned your lesson the first time. Now uh, and let's hope that somewhere down the road you don't ha- you don't goof up the third time. You know, you know that that saying, third time's a charm. Okay, I hope I hope Kruby, uh realizes that covering things only when it, when it comes to covering up these 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 photo pictures and whatnot, or people that may or may not be important. Only works in mysterious. M- only works in mysteries or mysterious moments or character reveals. Okay. 
it does not work when someone's like, oh, I'm very sad that this person turned evil. It does not work like that. I don't know why, it just doesn't. <laughs> not even I do that when, when it comes to um, people that I, I either dislike or was very negative in my past. Does that make sense? I don't cover up people with my thumb. If, if anything, if I really hated that person, I would like scratch them out. That makes more sense than, oh no, my friend's now bad. I wish it was good. No, you don't do that. Or, oh no, my, my ex-wife is bad. I'm going to cover up with my thumb. <laughs> no, you either burn up the picture, rip that out, or, or crop it out, cut it out, whatever. You do stuff like that, not this this stupid stuff like covering up with a thumb. That's only what you do when it comes to mystery. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even th still, that doesn't make sense uh, in mystery plots. But like when it comes... But, but in that sense, it kind of makes more sense because to the audience, it makes you want, it makes one the audience to think, oh, who's that? Who, who, you know, but the best way to do it is not by the thumb. I, I'm giving advice here. Okay. The best way to do it is not but with the thumb, but, but with like, with, uh, with, with just like a with something that just like a book or or, or paperweight or something yeah I, I could go on but like seriously come on <laughs> if you haven't learned your lesson by now it's pro then probably you should probably take notes like keep it in a notebook and said okay this is a stupid idea don't do it unless X okay Unless it's mysterious, then don't do it. Or, well, when it comes to these things. But, yeah. <sighs> the, the lady in the photograph of the black hair is not Cinder's mom, which is apparently a f fan theory. Yeah, okay, who the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. Pardon my fwinch. But, <laughs> the fans, the fans who came up with this, with this theory, either dumb or it's an act. I'm hoping that you're all like paradising and like, oh, could this person be this mom? Da da da, and making fun of a, a theorist. I'm honestly hoping you're making fun of a theorist, or or just people who theorize. Because that's that was just stupid. Let's just let's just be honest. There's. The world building does not need to be that small uh, where they're like everyone's somehow related to another. Pietro is related to Cinder because he knew uh, or did uh, Cinder's mom. Da da da. Uh, you know, that's stupid. <laughs> it's it's just, it'll be essentially a soap opera at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, if I really honestly tried and put it, <laughs> put it to, uh, uh, if I honestly tried, I could probably write a fan fiction. Um, I, I'll probably eventually, um, lo um, lose interest and give up. Uh, but I probably might, uh, this make, kind of almost makes me want to write, write a soap opera where, well, Or, 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 uh, the characters don't die scenario. Like it, like it's some sort of Mortal Kombat series. Yeah, like they're half, like, or a mixture of both. They're both related and they're both, uh, Mortal Kombat characters. Or not Mortal Kombat characters, but like a Mortal Kombat, uh, Mortal Kombat-like series. Where the character, essentially the characters don't die or when they do die, don't worry, they'll be revived by magic. Or time travel. So, yeah. Uh, anyways. 
Robin encountering the bees was a late addition to the outline, because priorities. Uh, but it gave every member, every member uh, of Ruby a moment. Uh, I don't. You you could easily do that with 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 them fighting with with them not just having a montage of. Uh, you can easily do that with not just them having a montage of them uh, training with the Aesops, but like, well. Actually, not just a montage, but like actual episodes where they actually fight each and every one of the Aesops. But it's, a, it's still training, but like they like we actually get to see the fights and not just screen by screen of them sort of training or sort of fighting. You know, like literally I, the audience needs to learn more about the Aesops and what they do and like they are limited Two. Does that make sense? What what are what are their what are their limits? So far, the only thing we know is that Morrow is stupid. Essentially, he's, he's essentially a dumb dog at this point. Uh, and you don't do you also don't do the same justice with every member of uh, the Happy Huntresses. The only two characters we're fully fledged up by this at this point. Is May Marigold and Robin Hill. Maybe. Maybe um, the sheep girl. But that's about it. Well, we barely got to know the, the tall one in the back. I, I forgot her name. But regardless, like, you, you, you don't have your priorities in line. But anyways. I could have fixed this image i'm sorry this image is a lot uh squinched or squashed or whatever but i try to make it as big as possible but not too big to where the letter to where the words i couldn't read or where you couldn't read uh, anyways they wanted the vault in the academy to feel similar to the one in haven but not dr a direct copy okay i, I don't care um Miles believes that if Ironwood would allow himself to be more vulnerable, more often things would go on differently. Huh? I... I... I, I think he's going off of the whole trope of the general is stiff. Trope. Um, but honestly, that's kind of a boring trope. Uh, and so far, it does not feel... It does not fit well with uh, James Ironwood as a character. He's more... If anything, he's more interesting than the actual... He's actually more interesting than every character in Volume 7. Uh, to be honest, that's just the facts. Well, when it comes to... Uh, look, like if you're interested in with in, with any individual character, okay, fine. But like when it comes to like James Ironwood, he literally carried this volume. When it comes to like a, uh, a objective writer's uh, point of view, you know what I'm saying? Uh, perspective. In, in in my perspective, like yeah, sure, everyone's just as uh, important in volume seven. But like with Ironwood, I feel like he was more interesting. Does that make sense? Now that right there. That right there um, is probably um, it's probably a object, uh, objective uh, an objective statement right there. Like, okay, fine. You could probably do, uh, agree with uh, agree or disagree with me on, on what is considered uh, subjective and what is considered uh, objective. Um. But, like, with no emotions or strings attached, like, I personally want, I actually personally want to be more interested in, 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 in Jacques Schnee with this volume. You know what I'm saying? I personally wanted to be more interested in, and, in, in, intrigued by, uh, Clover and Crow. I, I, and, and Oscar and Ospin and and Weishin and 
and winter, right? I personally want to be more attached with those characters. But no, I, it just, I just feel like I'm more attached with the him. Oh, oh sorry, I, I accidentally side the screen. But my point, my point is, I, I feel like objectively, he's just more interesting. And that's, that's just by default. I, I, there's nothing that I can change about that. I, I want to be more interested in the other characters, but I feel like objectively, he's more interesting. But my point is, I don't see how this is, I, I don't see how this is valid. If Ironwood would be, allow himself to be more vulnerable, then, of, then more often, then things would have gone differently. Vulnerable? Are you talking about like, like, what, like, how, what degree of vulnerable are we talking about? He's a general. He's supposed to be, okay, we need to like solve the, the problem. How do we save, how do we save Atlas? How do we save Mantle? How do we save Remnant? Okay, he's thinking in the degree of how do we save the majority? Or how do we save as many possible people? How do we save the most possible, pos uh, most possible people possible? Uh, that that could have been worded right. Uh, that could have been worded <laughs> correctly later. But my my point is, what do you mean vulnerable? You're not. I I feel like I'm missing some context here. What do you mean vulnerable? Vulnerable to suggestion? Because so far, I think he has been vulnerable to suggestion and all that. But however, he's not... But however, he, if anything, he's not vulnerable to... Uh, he's, not, he's, he's not vulnerable to, to decisions. And I feel like he was super vulnerable with, with trust and whatnot. But like... You kind of broke. They kind of broke his trust. What are you so? If if I were in the same situation, I'd be like, no, get out of here. You're wasting my time. If you can't trust me, I literally give you all the reasons to for you to trust me. And and, and I really want you to be on my side, right? And I really want to do things the right way. But I can't trust you. You've broken my trust. Now get out and leave. There's the door. Bye bye. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. What else do you want me to do? And what else do you want me to say for Ironwood? What does Ironwood should say? I mean, yeah, sure, he's a fictional character, but I'm like, seriously, realistically, no one's, no one's. Just going to like, okay, fine. I, since you're s sorry, I well, I mean, well, I mean, they didn't. I don't think they apologized. Uh, I, I honestly, everyone's just been keeping secrets and all that. But like, I'm just, I'm just confused. That's all. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you mean by more, more vulnerable. Or we're, he's, he's just supposed to like, like accept the fact that they didn't trust him for no reason and and then they're like oh well okay fine i guess i should just let you no that's not how the real world works i guess i'm sorry just uh anyways <laughs> I could probably go tangent on tangent with Ironwood, but I feel like they dirt him dirty with um, him in Volume 7. Anyways, the invitation to the Sneaking Manor was originally going to be a news conference. I don't know if that would have been good or uh, if that would have been better, good, bad, or worse. But alright, who cares? That's That's the end. That's it right there, folks. See ya in the next episode. Bye-bye.